Let's talk about September 27, 1825. Now you might ask yourself why such a random day from over 190 years ago. This was not an ordinary day. It was a day responsible for one of the most significant events in human history. On this day, thousands of people lined the track to witness locomotion number one make its way into Darlington on the Stockton and Darlington line in England. Exuberant horse riders flanked the locomotion which hauled several wagons of coal and flour. The locomotion also hauled the first purpose-built passenger carriage called Experiment, marking the world's first passenger carrying train and the beginning of the railway age. In the early days, the Stockton and Darlington Railway did not have a signaling scheme to protect the locomotion traveling back and forth between the two towns. A single train on a track did not warrant such an investment. But as locomotives, Hope, Diligence and Black Diamond entered service, a method to safely control and regulate train movements became necessary. The most obvious method to regulate trains was the line of sight principle. In this method, there was no signaling mechanism informing the driver of the state of the line ahead. Instead, trains were driven on line of sight, a rudimentary approach to maintain separation between trains. But stopping a 60-ton train using line of sight was not practical. By the time the preceding train was seen, the distance remaining to break and stop the train safely was too short, and as a result, accidents occurred. The operators quickly realized they needed a new approach to maintain a safe distance between trains. The first signaling approaches were human-based. Engineers divided the track into sections several miles long and stationed railway policemen at the beginning of each section. The policemen using hand signals indicated to the train driver the status of the track section ahead. The all right signal indicates the track section ahead is clear to enter. The danger signal indicates the track section ahead is occupied and cannot be entered. The caution signal indicates the train can enter the track section but under caution. When train 1 arrives at the first track section, the policeman gives the all right signal indicating the track section ahead is clear and allows the train to pass. When the second train arrives, the policeman gives the danger signal indicating to the driver to stop, since a minimum time has not elapsed since the first train passed, typically 8 minutes. Once the full 8 minutes have elapsed, the policeman will permit the second train to enter the track section under caution by giving the caution signal. This approach maintained a consistent time separation between trains, assuming that after 8 minutes, the first train has cleared the track section. This signaling approach came to be called the time interval method. The time interval method served its purpose, but this approach had its drawbacks since it could not take into account unexpected mechanical failures or any other emergencies. Think of this scenario. The first train enters a section with a blind curve and experiences a mechanical failure causing the train to stop. The policeman at the entrance of the track section is not aware of the failure, and when the second train arrives, the policeman allows the train to enter the same track section after the requisite 8 minutes have passed. Due to this decision, based on a lack of real-time information, the second train collides with the first train. This scenario illustrates a time interval approach, while elementary and effective in the beginning, was not a bulletproof signaling system for protecting trains. As technology advanced, railroads adopted. First was the invention of the telegraph in the late 1830s, which gave rise to the absolute block method of signaling. Second was the signal semaphore. Policemen used signal semaphores instead of hand gestures to indicate the status of the track ahead. The telegraph allowed the policemen to communicate with each other when trains entered or exited a track section, which gave certainty that a track section is clear before another train is permitted to enter. For example, Policeman A allows train 1 to enter track section 1 and telegraphs policeman B that a train has entered the track section. When the train exits track section 1, policeman B telegraphs policeman A indicating that train 1 has passed track section 1, and policeman A allows train 2 to enter the same track section. If policeman A does not receive a telegraph from policeman B indicating train 1 has passed track section 1, policeman A prevents train 2 from entering that same track section. The absolute block method gave absolute certainty that a track section ahead is clear before the next train is permitted to enter. Railroads would continue to evolve as new technologies emerged. 
Just as the telegraph enabled the absolute block method of signaling, the invention of the fail-safe track circuit by William Robinson in 1872 ushered in the modern signaling era. The track circuit gave the ability to positively determine the location of a train independent of a railway policeman. All of a sudden, the track circuit opened up new possibilities. The track circuit integrated signals, switches, and levers and panels into a mechanism to control the safe movement of trains along a track. The track circuit also gave rise to the concept of block separation between trains, meaning one train in one block and one empty block between trains. For the next 150 years and counting, the conventional fixed block signaling method became the de facto method across the signaling industry. The conventional fixed block signaling method has served the industry well, but as populations in major cities grow, transit operators are demanding more from their subways. Unfortunately, conventional fixed block signaling has a natural limit in terms of the number of trains it can push through a subway line, which limits the number of passengers who can ride the subway on a daily basis. A conventionally signal system must maintain a minimum of one block separation between trains and that is the limiting factor. To increase subway capacity, a new signaling approach is required. 1985 ushered in a new era in rail signaling when Vancouver SkyTrain and Toronto's Scarborough RT in Canada opened the rapid transit line using a new signaling approach called moving block signaling. The moving block principle is simple. Maintain a bare minimum separation between trains based on track speed, distance and grade allowed by safety. This approach eliminates the empty block separating trains overcoming the limitations of a fixed block system. The moving block approach permits transit operators to increase their line capacity by adding more trains than is possible under a conventionally signaled subway line. The technology which permits moving block signaling is radically different from the technology used to implement conventional fixed block signaling. Moving block signaling is enabled by CBTC or Communication Based Train Control. Over the past 35 years, transit operators are increasingly switching to CBTC and moving block signaling. Contrary to popular belief, operational performance is the primary reason. CBTC is attractive because of its ability to bring trains closer together which increases throughput than is possible in a conventionally signaled subway. When comparing the operational capabilities between conventional and CBTC signaling, CBTC has an overwhelming advantage when comparing operational features such as Maximize throughput, check. Automation, check. Automatic speed regulation, check. Bidirectional operations, check. Reduce wear and tear of train propulsion and braking system, check. Energy optimization, check. Automatic recovery from perturbations, check. Equipment and maintenance, low or limited. Interoperability, no. The only advantage for conventional signaling is interoperability and even that advantage is shrinking over time as CBTC suppliers de begin to develop interoperable solutions. But when comparing safety capabilities, CBTC's advantage is marginal. Train localization, neutral. Safe train separation, neutral. Parted concept protection, neutral. Train door interlocks, neutral. Departure interlocks, neutral. Route interlocks, neutral. Protection against passing a signal at danger, neutral. Broken rail detection, no. Speed supervision, check. Rollback protection, check. Protection against human error, check. Speed supervision, rollback protection, and protection against human error favor CBTC. Broken rail favors conventional signaling, while the rest are neutral. Operational capabilities are pushing the adaption of CBTC and moving block signaling in the urban transit space. CBTC's ability to achieve operational excellence is due to its near total control over the entire subway from central, wayside and vehicle, while reducing, if not eliminating, the human element which interferes with peak performance. This tight integration permits CBTC to bring trains closer together because adjustments can be made in milliseconds which is impossible by a human operator in a conventionally signaled subway. This tight integration allows CBTC to provide a level of operational performance that is unmatched by any conventionally signaled system. 
the future of rail signaling lays with CBTC technologies and moving block signaling. The adoption of CBTC is spreading and becoming the technology of choice for transit operators who look to squeeze more out of their existing transit infrastructure or new transit operators demanding maximum performance. Therefore, it's imperative for industry professionals to become familiar with CBTC basics so informed decisions are made.